I can just share a quick thing in the chat here. Welcome to Lurgeon Institution Presents Power Up Your Japanese program. Um, we'd love to hear where you're joining us from. Um, and so um, you'll see in the chat, you can do a little Jiko Shokai or um, self introduction there. Um, just your name and where you're joining us from, um, the grade levels that you teach if you are a teacher, um, and the biggest challenge that you face um, with Japanese language education. Um, let me. Actually, this is hard to hear myself. There we go. <laughs> so, I think we just got about yeah, a good number of people here, but maybe we'll wait one more moment and then we'll we'll get started because we do have a pretty um, a pretty packed program for uh, <laughs> for this afternoon or evening, um, depending on where you are in the world. So. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We're looking forward to this today. Mm -hmm. Seeing a couple of familiar faces. So nice yeah. to see some of our old NPJ <laughs> folks, JLeap folks, Joy program folks participants, even. Joy folks. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all for being here. So I think I might let's see here. Do a little fade out on the music um, and we can get started, I think. Um, so as I've said, welcome to Laurasian Institution Presents Power Up Your Japanese program. Um, this meeting is being recorded um, and it will be hosted on our YouTube channel. So um, just as a note, if you would like to not um, show up in the recording, please turn off your cameras. Um, and uh, yeah, um, so before we get started, like I said, um, please introduce yourself in the chat. Um, I put in a, uh, oops, I did not put it in the right place. There we go. Here is a, a brief list um, of things you can introduce yourself on. Like I said, your name, where you're joining from, um, the grade levels you teach if you're a teacher, and um, the biggest challenge that you feel you face um, as a language teacher. So it would be lovely to hear where you're all joining us from. Um, and um, to go over a little bit of our presentation today, um, start off with a couple introductions. So. Um, my name is not Q&A submissions, even though that's what it says on Zoom, but my name is Samantha Corpus. I'm the program assistant of Laurasian Institution. And um, joining me as well is uh, in the Tokyo office, Yume Hidaka. So Yume, if you want to say a quick hello. <laughs> Thank you, Yume. And uh, also joining us is Gabriel, who will actually be doing a presentation a little later on. So you can say a quick hi now if you would like, Gabe. And, yeah. uh... <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Yeah, uh, very excited for this uh, session today. This is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. So uh, I'm looking forward to hearing from both JFLA and AETJ, uh, Lena and Anne. So why don't we uh, roll right along to that pretty soon here? Yeah. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thank you, Gabe. Um, so just a quick introduction about Laurasian. Let's see if I can get my... Uh... For some reason, I can't get my screen to move on to the next slide. Um, just quickly about Laurasian Institution, um, we are a nonprofit 501c3, um, an educational institution um, specializing in cultural and educational exchange with the US and Japan. Um, we have a lot of programs that Gabe will tell you about shortly. Um, so I'm not going to talk any more about those and we'll actually um, go over today's schedule then. Um, so starting off, uh, we will have three presentations from JFLA, um, Lena Kelly is here representing, um, from AATJ, and um, Anne Jordan is representing there, and as I said, Gabriel Rebeck representing Laurasian. Each presentation will be about 10 minutes long, followed by a 10-minute Q&A, so you can speak directly to um, the presenters. Um, if you are comfortable with you know, using the raise hand function, um, you can ask your question live. Or if you'd like, you can also send your question as a um, direct message to me at Q&A submissions, and I will read them out on your behalf. So um, we'll have about 10 minutes of presentation, 10 minutes of the Q&A. Um, and then after that, um, after those three presentation sets, um, there will be some time for um, breakout room discussions. And so we'll have, I believe, three breakout rooms, um, about seven minutes each. Um, for you to speak with all of us, um, all of the staff here um, with Laurasian, AATJ, and JFLA, um, and of course with each other to share ideas um, and resources. 
um, at the very end, um, you'll want to stick around because we'd have a um, sponsored raffle prize um, from Sugimoto Tea Company. Um, they've generously donated um, some organic genmai cha. Um, so please stick around for that. We'll have some other Japanese goodies as well for the runner ups. Um, so without further ado, I would love to introduce Lena Kelly of JFLA. Um, and I'll put some of her information here in the chat as well. So if you would like to follow her or JFLA um, online, that information is there on the chat. So um, Lena Kelly is the Associate Program Officer at the Japan Foundation Los Angeles. She previously gained experiences in Japanese language teaching through her years at Valley Gakuen. She's happy to continue connecting with Japanese language teachers through her experience as, at JFLA, and she's very looking forward to sharing resources from her organization. So I will pass it along now to Lena. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so much for introducing me, and I'm very um, honored to be here to introduce our resources and what we can offer. So let me share my screen. Okay, so let me put into presentation mode. All right, so thank you so much for joining us today. So my name is Lena Kelly and I'm the Associate Program Officer at the Japan Foundation Los Angeles. So today I would like to share a little bit about what is our organization Japan Foundation and what events do we currently offer and what grants and teaching and learning resources we have and what can I do as an advocacy coordinator. So I'll take you on a little journey. So basically the Japan, um, Japan Foundation itself is the headquarters is Japan, but there's 25 offices in 24 countries. The reason why it's 25 instead of the 24 is that the United States has two offices, one in Los Angeles and one in New York. And Japan Foundation itself was established in 1972 as an intercultural exchange to make sure that we have positive relationships with um, different countries all over the world. And the Japan Foundation Los Angeles, shortened as JFLA, was opened in 1983 in Little Tokyo. So that kind of like the heart of downtown Los Angeles. And currently we are located in the Wilshire area, but we're still pretty close to Little Tokyo. And the Japan Foundation New York office, office focuses on Japan studies, but for us, we focus on Japanese language education all over the United States. And what are, um, to introduce some of the ways that we support Japanese language education is providing the grants and free learning, teaching resources, advocacy goods. We have recently created like Uchiwa, Bandana, and like we always have those badges to provide for the classroom. And then we, I recently we've been um, receiving um, inquiries about support letters. So we do also do support letters to make sure that we can support different institutions as much as we can. Okay, and the next I would like to kind of talk about our events. So lately, since it's been the pandemic, we kind of have our um, events virtual. We've been having virtual exhibitions as well, but our upcoming event, which is on July 21st uh, to July 22nd on Thursday, um, it starts from 7 p.m. Pacific time. So within the 24 hour period on our website, you're able to watch um, this movie called Stardust Over the Town. It's a, um, it's a movie from last year. But um, yeah, on our website, you can quickly check out our events. And then um, since Sam was kind enough to provide the link to our website, if you want to know more about our events, as well as like we, um, if you want to know how to register for our newsletter, you can always email me, but you can check out our website for further information. And then another event that we are collaborating with Counterpoint Press is called um, with Colorful a Conversation with Etomori and Julie Leifka Himes. So it's like a literary event. So we are going to be having like a discussion between a New York Times bestselling author and um, Etomori who is having her book Colorful released in English at the end of July. So it's like a collaborative event to kind of um, commemorate her first English um, in book. And then, so the topic of Colorful is about um, like Japanese youth and how their relationship with their parents and with the pandemic and talking about human relationships, I think it's like a perfect topic to discuss. So um, definitely please check it out and it's gonna be on our website. And if you're signed up for newsletter, um, the links will be provided there as well. And then now I kind of want to talk more about what probably Japanese language teachers are kind of gonna be more excited about is our grant programs. And we also have training programs in Japan as well. 
So we have a couple of grant programs. The first um, one I would like to introduce is um, salary assistant grants for Japanese language courses. The grant provides salary and fringe benefits up to $30,000 per year on a cost sharing basis. And then basically the deadline is once a year in April, but with the, uh, with the grant, we can like help establish new programs, make sure that um, if you wanna expand the program or if you wanna like make sure that the, the, if, you're, if your position needs more funding, the salary assistant grant will be helping you a lot. And the next one is the Japanese language education project grant which um, can cover up to $5,000 and we cover like webinars, conferences. So any event that, um, that is not just your organ or school organization, it's like um, it benefits a lot of schools. We also do like um, if you are publishing a textbook or like any kind of book, we also provide that kind of benefit as well. So if you have any questions, please contact our Mamiko Nakai. She's the person who handles the grants. And the next one is the Japanese um, teaching material purchase grant. So lately, I know a lot of teachers um, need support with um, online technology. So there's like subscription fees and like digital textbooks. So Japanese teaching material purchase grant um, covers that. So up to $10,000, um, you are able to get um, support. And then we also have Japanese language learners event grant, which is up to $1,000 to cover um, region-wide, national, statewide events like Recently, with the pandemic as well, for this one, there's been like online like speech contests, quiz contests, and like the picture that we have here is the Junior Japan Bowl. So we are able to cover a lot of different grants. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact Mike Penny. And another um, cool like um, well, it's a little different from a grant, but it's like a training program where you train in Japan. So there's like different types of um, training programs, but you will be able to stay in um, the Japan Foundation Japanese Language Institute in Urawa, which is more in Saitama, close to Tokyo area. So there's like um, the, other than the plane ticket, pretty much the board. And um, so you'll be staying at the location. So board meals, everything will be covered. And um, I think the deadline was last year. So hopefully by like for this year or next, it's like gonna be in December. So the previous year was December. And so those are the kind of training programs that we have. We also added the online training program. And then there's also the, the Japanese language training for specialists. So it's not just for teachers. There's also like a two month, five month course for researchers, but it's also primary language training, but this is located in Kansai. So um, it's not the same location as the one in Urawa, but this is another great program for not just like language teachers, but it's also for people who wanna yeah, specialize in their um, field in terms of language. And if you have any questions, please contact our specialist, Thomas Lin. Okay, and now I would like to kind of go over our learning teacher teaching resources. Okay, and so recently we came out with this um, um, animated commercial for our e-learning platform Minato. The cool thing about Minato is that it's free and there's like multiple courses. One is um, based off of our um, Japan Foundation textbook called Marugoto, which focuses a lot of conversation. And then there's also hiragana, katakana, kanji, and any calligraphy or like flower arrangement or like those Japanese cultural courses. The cool thing about this website is that you can like, um, it tests, tests a lot of the learners on their um, rec recognition. So it's like a great way to like, during the summer, if students are like, what are ways we can kind of upkeep our Japanese, like e-learning, um, this platform is like perfect for those type of students. And yeah, we have over 200,000 people who are registered all over the world. And we also created videos on our course overviews and how to register. So if you have any questions on how to navigate the platform, we have videos and that kind of stuff too. And we also have an opportunity to um, talk to Japanese language teachers all over the United States who learn Japanese as second language. So this was a great project to kind of see what made these Japanese language teachers want to learn Japanese and what made them decide to um, continue their path as a Japanese language teacher. So they kind of talked about their experience and then they also kind of gave like encouraging messages to students. So hopefully these videos of Sensei Why Japanese can kind of connect teachers as well as students on what are um, great ways to connect to um, 
their language and a future path, career path with it. And then we also have additional teaching resources on our website. So if you, um, so yeah, on our link, we have the teaching resources. I'll provide the links later, if anything. And then we have like the um, videos with like, we collaborate with AATJ about the um, advanced near teaching practices, how to, um, it's like a um, 15 minute or so video on talking about how the Japanese language and then how to utilize that in the classroom. So it's like a great comprehensive video series. And we also have, we work with like Yoshimoto Kogyo Jaru Jaru, um, the comedy duo. And then we work with a lot of Japanese language teachers and other professors to make sure we can have a really great um, Japanese skit videos as well as cultural videos. So that's like an eight part series. And we got a lot of great reviews from teachers as well on that. And then as an advocacy coordinator, I wanted to kind of um, talk about how um, I do provide like the, um, like the advocacy goods and like grant resources and support letters and so many um, more. But if, you, if your students or you yourself have any questions about like, what can you do in the classroom or what are ways, like if there's any, any questions or like sometimes when the program, when there's difficulty, sometimes it may be too late. So it's really important to kind of like, just email, email us and kind of let us know, like there's, there's things that are going on and you need that kind of support. So like, we're more than willing to like listen and kind of check in. So feel free to email us anytime and we're more than happy to help you. So thank you so much for giving me the time to speak today. And I look forward to talking to you in the breakout room. So thank you so much. Michelle, thank you so much. I know that's a lot of information <laughs> to, um, to try and share all at once right now, um, but I'd like to open it up. We have about 10 minutes for questions um, just for Lena and um, JFLA. Um, so if anyone has anything, um, please either send it to me um, as a direct message or you can feel free to use the raise hand button um, on Zoom and um, we'd love to hear from you. Um, I guess, Lena, do you have any, like, is there one program that you think that maybe is, would be the most applicable for our Japanese teachers here today? Um, like one that you would recommend um, either a grant or um, one of the other things that JFLA provides um, that you think they definitely like should check out out of all of the different ones that you talked about? Yeah, definitely. I do think the salary assistant grant, although it's once a year, it's a really valuable um, way to make sure that especially with COVID, it's been financially difficult for a lot of teachers. So I feel like that's a really, really important grant to kind of focus. And then, yeah, if, you, if anyone has any questions, they're more than welcome to kind of ask along the, like, the months. So I think it's best that we get communication about that, like if they need that kind of support. Okay, great, thank you so much. So I did just get a couple questions. Um, so I'm gonna go actually to David House first since he has his hand raised. David, would you like to uh, like to ask your question? See what happens when you raise your hand like you're supposed to do? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> well, I really, first I want to thank the Japan Foundation for the emergency COVID-19 salary assistance yes, yes. for you guys. Uh, uh, you guys and I've been in contact with Mamiko especially, and it was very, very, very useful and very clear and direct. So thank you very much. Um, one of my questions is, has to do with the Marugoto, the textbook. So I, I know that our former JOY coordinator had a copy of it. If we wanted a copy of it, do we need to order it or is it free to download or? Okay, um, yeah. Um, if it's if it's a textbook, well, I kind of have to discuss, but um, yeah, feel free to email me about that. And then okay. right now there are like the physical books, but now that it's available as like e-download, so like mm -hmm. ebook, so mm -hmm. there may be accessible ways to, and I could um, refer you to like options that you can order Marigoto from rather than ordering from Amazon, which may be a little bit more pricier than like certain bookstores. So I can refer you to that information later. Yeah, I was just wondering, you know, to what degree it was free. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I could talk to you about that. So, like, okay. please yeah. email me about that. Then I can definitely. Will do. Will do. And then my other question was, there used to be, mm -hmm. some, somewhere in my memory, there are these larger institutional grants that were meant to, I mean, these are 
they went from like hundreds of thousands of dollars to multi-million dollar grants that were meant to establish programs in okay. different institutions. You know, I'm just wondering if those still exist or mm -hmm. if they existed for a while and disappeared because now there's no money for that. Yeah, I have to double I have to double check with that as well. So if you can include that on your email if that's okay. But um yeah, the the grants that are readily available and the information that we can immediately provide is the grants that I mentioned right now. So I'm not really sure about like like the um, one that extends over, you know, the salary assistant grant, which is like thirty thousand dollars. So I kind of have to look into that as well. But thank you so much for sharing. So I appreciate it. And I, I guess the just as a, a last thing to ask, so mm -hmm. the salary assistance grant, I know that the deadline was in, what was it, April or something like yes, that? Yes, once a year, so it's in right. April. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is once a year. It's not one of those where after the grants have been accepted, you'll change the due date on the website to like November or something, oh, not term I by term. Yeah, with the salary assistant grants, it's usually once a year. And then yeah. um, project grants, like the one that's like um, the due date is like two months before you kind of start your program. Mm -hmm. So there's that. And then the material purchase grant and the mm -hmm. other event grant, that's twice a year. So there's more flexibility with the deadlines for those programs. But with the salary assistant grant, and then you get the, as you mentioned, the COVID relief grant, then that's like a special exception. So mm -hmm. then then there's a deadline for that one specifically, but generally with the salary assistant grant, we're in April for that one. Okay, great. Thanks, Lena. Yeah, no problem. And thanks so much for your questions, David. That, those are really, um, really good ones. Um, we do have another question here um, about the qualifications for the studying in Japan program. Um, are there anything specific that um, the teach like qualifications that the teachers need to have to apply for that program? Uh, I don't think there is. A, let me. Let me pull up, if I can pull up the page. But, um, well, that'll take a while, but um, <laughs> but yeah, if, if there's any questions about the program itself or specialists, I could, um, I'll could i add the emails on the chat. So like anyone has any questions about the grants, you can quickly um, refer them to them. But I don't think there is a specific requirement. It's just a um, deadline to submit the application sometimes can conflict with teachers. So that may be the biggest hurdle, like, because the semester system or um, the year system can be different in Japan and the United States. Mm -hmm. So that may, be, that may add to the difficulty of applying to the program. So there may be a conflict with that, but overall like our websites have a lot of great information and it's pretty, the process is pretty streamlined. So I'll, I'll provide that information as well. Great, thank you, Lena. And um, I know someone was asking again, that if you check the chat, um, I think uh, Kobayashi Sensei sent, um, shared um, some resources. Yes, um, great, thank you so much. <laughs> um, and I'll just reshare as well, all of the uh, social media and like different ways that you can connect with JFLA and with Lena. Um, oops, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, Sorry, Hasegawa Sensei, I accidentally sent that only to you. So <laughs> let me send that to everyone again, that way, um, if anyone wants to follow up with Lena with any more questions later on, I know 10 minutes is a very short time to be able to get everyone's questions in, um, but um, we'll also be sharing all of these links in an email afterwards. So if you can't catch them right now, um, don't worry, we will have other opportunities to share them with you. Um, and we have maybe one more, we have time for maybe one more short question if there's anything else for Lena. Um, otherwise we might move on then to um, our next presenter. Um, and I'm just checking the chat to make sure that no one else has questions. So I think we are, we're good to move on. Um, so thank you again, Lena, for all of your excellent insights. Um, and yes, um, I'm sure everyone will be looking forward to asking you more questions in the breakout rooms later. <laughs> um, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, so our next um, presenter, our next speaker today is Anne Jordan. And let me share with you um, Anne and AATJ, or the American Association of Teachers of Japanese. Um, I hope I got your, um, your acronym right, Anne. I'm very sorry if I, if I, yeah. if I did that wrong. <laughs> um, where is the chat here? There we go. 
All right. So um, Anne Jordan serves as the president of the American Association of Teachers of Japanese and is also a Japanese language education specialist with the JLEAP program with Laurasian Institution. Um, recently retired after 35 years as a K-12 public school teacher in California, she has taught students from diverse socioeconomic, ethnic, cultural, and racial backgrounds, all united in their passion for Japanese language and culture. She believes being a Japanese teacher is the best job in the world, so lucky all of you. <laughs> and she looks forward to sharing her insights and strategies for powering up your Japanese programs today. So. Without further ado, I'll pass it off to Anne. Welcome. Okay. Hi. Let me let me share my screen. The secret is to do this without having anybody see my desktop. Okay. Waiting. Yes. Okay. All right. Can everybody see uh, my screen? It says Japanese program SOS. Great. Okay. Well, I'm really happy to be here with you today. Um, to share some Japanese program SOS, and that stands for uh, Strategies, Opportunities, and Support. It's not, a, it's not a signal for distress. It's a, about being proactive, having a proactive mindset. Um, and let me get rid of, this is in the way. There we go. Okay. Anyways, um, I... So strategies, opportunities, and support. And although I'm gonna talk about support uh, at, the, at, at, at the end, I need to say something about AATJ because um, one of your big sources of support in addition to JFLA is AATJ. And I think, you know, there's a list here on the screen of some of the a few of the, the benefits of being a member, but I think personally that the biggest benefit is something that is not on the list and it's not even really tangible. Um, and that is that um, as a high school teacher and often even in many colleges, like especially community college or smaller colleges, you may be the only Japanese teacher. You know, we are often like, and it can be really lonely being that lone wolf, but being a member of a big organization uh, means that you're not alone and you have the power of a strong supportive community behind you and with you. So that I think is a really big benefit of being a member of AATJ. So um, I haven't traveled in, by airplane since uh, March 2020, um, maybe some of you, it's the same thing, but what I remember is on domestic flights, a lot of times, the flight attendant says something like, we know you have a lot of choices. Thank you for choosing to fly Southwest or you know Delta or whatever. Um, but Japanese is also one among many choices and your students have a choice and it's not a requirement. So as with um, electives, I mean, as with, as with airlines, um, marketing is just as important as, as quality because if nobody knows how great your program is, then you're not gonna have okyaksama. And so um, even if you're not the marketing type, you kind of have to constantly have that mindset. And, and, and also your program should, needs to be good, needs to be better than the other choices. And you want it to be the one that students choose. So one way is to make sure for the first S that you have proactive strategies. And this is for all programs, programs that are really strong and healthy, programs that are maybe that, that could be, you know, use improvement, um, all programs. And one of the obstacles to that is a hesitation among many teachers, maybe especially Japanese teachers, to toot their own horn and because they think if I'm bragging about my program, am I saying I'm awesome? No, you're saying my students are great, my program, they're doing these great things. I want everybody to, to know about it. And you don't wanna wait until you're, you're in, in distress you know, to do this. So one of the ways, one of the things to keep in mind is that you wanna have a high profile so that people know what's going on. And besides just kuchikomi or, um, word of mouth, you know, there are some other things that you can do. For example, 
um, newsletters. This is sounds kind of old school, but actually it, it can, there's some pretty snazzy newsletter formats now. And um, these are a great way to communicate what's going on in your programs. Um, parents not only are interested, but this is great for your community, for your board um, and administrators. Um, if you don't already have a, a website, consider setting one up. That is a, a really great way. Um, being involved outside of Japanese is important too, because your program is not just you vital, but you 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 need to be vital to the school by being involved. Um, so these are some different ways. But the other thing is you want to be collecting evidence. Um, why is that important? Um, evidence is important is because then you have an ongoing record um, of the different things that that are happening, and it's and you can draw on that if you reach a, if there's a point when you know you need to write a quick article or or you're asking for a support letter from AATJ and it, it really helps um, if I can point to if, if we can and JFLA as well in our letters if we can we can cite specific things that you that you do and you in, in uh, that your program um, has done. So some of those in, include, you know, keeping track of the history of your program, enrollment data, any kind of mention in the media, just all that. Just make a Google folder and just dump it in there. Um, okay. So um, speaking of newsletters and program websites and maintaining a high profile, I two teachers um, uh, that uh, are here today, I didn't know they were going to join, are um, Hara Sensei and Kobayashi Sensei, who are my, teaching at my old school, Los Gatos High School. And they have a newsletter called Yamaneko News, because the, um, well, the mascot is a wildcat. And then they also have a program website. And um, I was going to show you a little bit of it, but we don't have time. So instead, I will you can um, go to that QR code and take a look at it later. I, um, the reason why a website is a great thing to have is because it can be one-stop shopping. You know, everything that you, that you want people to see and know about can be there. Um, for the Los Gatos High School website, they, they've got a separate tab, they have a, a, a link to another website just for JNHS, Japanese National Honor Society. Um, they've got, you know, history. They have um, a link to this promotional video, um, which is another great um, tool. Um, so again, you know, you're not just a teacher, you're, you're in marketing uh, when you're teaching Japanese. Um, Nope, skip that. Okay, all right. So um, also, um, you want to be proactive when you're preparing for someday down the road, if you are going to retire. And I don't mean, oh, I'm retiring this year, but I mean five years away, three years. When you start thinking about it, then you should also be thinking about, okay, what happens after after I go? You know, I don't want the program to disappear when I disappear, because, you know, you built this program, you believe in it. So you want it to continue and you want to um, help it to, you know, go to the next, to the next, onto the next part. So um, use your network. This is where AATJ membership is, is helpful. Your local affiliate, JET alum, um, former students, Laurasian, their um, JFLA, um, you know, I I did that and uh, I kind of recruited my own replacement, and they're here today, and they're they're great. So you know, be actively invested in finding your replacement. Um, the O O is for opportunities. So everybody knows if you're a high school teacher of Japanese for sure. Um, this is true. Um, a lot of kids, a lot of students say, oh, being Japanese is being like, it's like being part of a family. And, and they say this because if you're that ipiki okami, or even if you have a, one more teacher there, it's really, it's, it's a, a program where students can go in four years of high school and have the same teacher 
for more than one class and, and, and learn and, and build relationships with that teacher and build relationships with the same students. So it's kind of like an island of safety in the middle of, you know, in, in the middle of a big, big ocean. Um, and this matters, especially now um, with like social emotional um, needs that students have. So you, so you should also think about not just building those relationships with your students and building those relationships between the students and among the students, but also with parents and community and your fellow teachers. And why that matters is because then they become invested in the Nihongo program family as well. And they, can, they are big allies. Um, involve your students in helping to build and promote your brand as a, as a Japanese program. Make your program accessible to all learners, just not, not certain learners. If, you know, if, if, if go to workshops to find out how to, how to make it accessible, you know, how to uh, modify, you know, your teaching for um, students who may not learn in the same way. Um, and take advantage of those opportunities that Lena was talking about that JFLA offers. And when you do, make sure you share. It's always important you share that information. Um, um, toot your own horn. So we have strategies, opportunities, and support is the last S. And um, with your Japanese program, it's really important, first of all, to be able to see the signs when things are starting to, when you, signs of trouble ahead. You know, do I need support? When is that critical? What's, what's happening here? Should I be concerned? So just a few things, there are other warning signs, but a few that I thought of. Um, your enrollment starts to decline. There's always like, you know, some years you have more and less it's, you know, up and down. But if you start to see a trend, you should pay attention to that. Um, or seems like there were a lot of signups, but my ad admin is only giving me this many sections when this would, there really should be an additional section. Make sure you ask questions, find out, um, be, you know, be vocal. Um, or perhaps your administration decides, okay, it tells you, um, we're just for next year, we're gonna cut Japanese one, but it's temporary. Be, 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 be careful about that because, that because that can be a possible sign of a possible phase out plan. So don't hesitate to ask questions, get information, be vocal. And also remember that, that group that you have behind you, you have your AATJ affiliate, local affiliates, you have other, you know, your, your colleagues, um, you have AATJ maybe you don't, you think, oh, it's too early to start worrying about this. No, you know, maybe if you have a concern, then, you know, start, bring it up and we can, we can work with you on that. Um, and then one other challenge that's actually a kind of a good problem to have is um, if you have been the only teacher and, and you're now teaching and you're full-time, you built a program and now your program is growing, but only for one more section. That challenge is, yay, my sections are growing, but I only have enough for one section. So you have two options. Try to find somebody to teach one period, which is very difficult, or you teach that extra period, which many Japanese teachers do, and that's really hard, but you may have to do it for a couple of years. But the other choice is, just keep it the way it is. And then you're keeping it, artif your program won't grow. Um, so you wanna be, if you start to see growth in your program or a potential for it, start getting involved early, start being proactive and trying to solve that challenge. Again, it's like trying to find your replacement with if you're getting ready to retire. Also start looking for people that might be able to teach Japanese and something else. Um, and, and talk to the people in your network. All right, so support from AATJ, which is my main topic. Um, so this is where having organizations like AATJ and JFLA can really help you. 
Um, when you start to notice signs of trouble or you begin to get concerned, uh, a lot of teachers are maybe hesitant to ask for help or they think, oh, it's not that bad, I'll just wait. But even before that, if you start to see signs, there are things that we can help you do to act strategically you know, and proactively much earlier. So you, again, you know, you shouldn't hesitate to reach out. But um, one of the ways that we support is by providing letters of support from AATJ and from JFLA. So, whoops, sorry about that. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so you can contact your local affiliate. So if you're from California, that would be C-A-J-L-T, or you can directly contact AATJ and JFLA directly. You have our, there's an email there and um, my contact information is gonna be, is available to you as well. And, um, or someone, if you have a colleague or you have, you know, a teacher who's maybe having that is a little bit in jeopardy, you can talk to, you can contact us on that person's behalf. And then what happens next is that we will write, start to, to write a letter of support, um, but we'll need more information that, so that we can write a better letter. And that's where, remember I said, start documenting and collecting evidence. This is where it's really helpful because we can write a really strong letter and, and you're, we're gonna ask you, okay, who are the key people? Who are the decision makers that we need to, to contact? Should we, how should, what's the, you know, who are the people that are really supportive in the, in the administration? Cause those are just as important to know as well. Um, uh, so that evidence, and then we write a letter, it could be to the administration, uh, your site administration, the school board, um, you know, who, whoever, it, would be whoever would be the ones that are in power, I guess. Um, and that evidence helps us get the ball rolling a lot faster when you get to this stage, we can move quickly. You also have other sources of support that you might not realize. For example, your local language teachers association or the state language teachers association. So as an example, in the spring, Indiana state Language Teachers Association and IATJ, uh, Indiana um, Japanese Language Teachers Association, our affiliate, they came together really quickly, contacted us, contacted lots of other groups and mobilized this huge and powerful effort to um, help save a local high school program that was in jeopardy. It was pretty remarkable how fast they came together. Um, another, um, support source is your students. Um, more recently, a group of Japanese National Honor Society officers, they initiated the, they began the mobilization and contacted the local AATJ affiliate. And um, I actually had a meeting with them, a Zoom meeting with these students a couple of days ago. So, you know, they're there and they met with the principal. So that's another source of support. You have parents, you have community partners, you have Fred Rogers who said, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. Um, and finally, um, SOS also stands for Superstar Otani Shohei. I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area. So we're not, I'm not a, I'm a Giants fan but I'm also a Japanese teacher. So I think I'm allowed to be a fan of Otani Shohei. Why is, he, why is he on the screen? He's on the screen because as much of a superstar as he is, he still has a team behind him. He couldn't do what he does without a team. So strategies, opportunities, support. He has star power, but he has a team behind him. And so do you, and AATJ is part of that team, JFLA, and the Laurasian Institution, and many others. And um, I think I probably went over 10 minutes, so I apologize. <laughs> but I think I left time for questions. Did I, Samantha? You have a little bit of time here. We can, we can okay. give a little bit extra time since I know that um, there, there's probably a lot of questions that people do have um, for you and for AATJ. 
Um, I do love where we've ended off here with Superstar with Tanya Shohei. <laughs> yeah, I wish he was a giant though. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, um, as with before, um, if you have questions, please feel free to raise your hand or you can send them to me at Q&A submissions as a direct message. Um, just to kind of like kick it a little bit, I guess. And like you only became present at AATJ kind of recently, I guess. You were a long-term member, but um, you kind of became a president recently, if I know, if I understand your history correctly. Yeah, well, I was vice president. And then uh, I think that was two years. And then mm -hmm. they, there's president-elect for one year and then president. And next year, there's past immediate past president so it's <laughs> so I feel like I've been around for a while mm -hmm. um yeah. but I, I was I might be the first one in a while mm -hmm. to be not a college teacher though wow yeah I didn't I didn't realize that actually um we did actually just get a question. So maybe I'll save okay. the question that I had for later on. Um, okay. But um, the question we have is, um, could you tell us what students need to do to join the Japanese National Honor Society? Um, and are uh, high school students able to join? Yes. So we have to actually, um, Kobayashi Kumi-sensei, who, um, who followed me at uh, Los Gatos High School uh, after I retired is also, she's here today and she is the um, co-director of for JNHS, Japanese National Honor Society. We have two co-directors, one is for college and one is for high school. And the two operate, um, there's some similar things, but they operate pretty, a little bit independent. I mean, there are certain unique features of, of both. So, um, I'm gonna, it sounds like the person who's asking the question is a high school teacher? Yes. I okay, so. mm -hmm. all right. So um, let me see. The first thing is um, you can go to the aatj.org website and there's a tab for student, I should know this. Like student activities, I think, and I, I think Jap. I will oh. do that link. Don't worry about that. Oh, good. Okay, so you can put that in the chat. Thank you. That was Kobayashi Sensei, huh? Okay. So, um, so in order to to start up a chapter at your school, and I highly recommend it. It's just it's great. Um, you need to have students. You need to have students. And those students to need, there's a, so the, the basic eligibility criteria. Um, it, oh, well, wait a minute. The sponsoring, you have to have a sponsoring teacher. That sponsoring teacher needs to be an AATJ member. Okay, once you have that, then you um, gather some students or generate some interest in it. Hey, we're going to start up a, a Japanese National Honor Society um, chapter, or, uh, or, or you can send them, you, you, you you notify the students who are eligible. So those students who are eligible are the ones who are in their second year of Japanese study. So it would be usually your, set, your Japanese two students. Um, they have completed the first semester, to, you know, basically they're in the second semester of, I mean, the first semester, I'm sorry, the first semester of their second year of language of Japanese study. Their GPA for Japanese, is a 3.5 or above. So there's a, an academic requirement and their GPA overall is a 3.0 or above. Um, so it's not a super high you know, bar, but there is, a, there is a bar. And what I found um, is rather than say, this is what you need to be, this is what you need in order to be eligible. Um, if you're interested, come to a meeting or something. Um, that again, it's, it's kind of funny, um, it's human nature, but when I look at their, I kind of know, okay, who has a three point, I know who has a, a 3.5 or higher in Japanese. So, so I'll send an invitation and say, you have, congratulations, you have met the first criteria for eligibility in JNHS. The other criteria is da 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 da. 
um, if you are interested in finding out more, come to a meeting and then, you know, and bring your, you know, chat, uh, unofficial transcript or something like that. Um, and then you just go for it. But you have a really great resource in, um, you can email, it's always hard to kind of get started. So you, you know, what do we do? Do we, how do we have meetings? It's, you know, what, so I say email K Kobayashi at, as she's going to put her, put your email in the chat, sensei, um, and she can help you get, get, get off the ground. Also look at the JNHS page on the, uh, the uh, El Los Gatos High School website, just for some inspiration. I don't know yeah. if that answered all your questions, I, but. I, I think you, I think you did, Anne. Thank you okay. so much for, for that response. Um, we do have another question and this may, this may be the last one okay. perhaps, unless we, anyone else is able to squeeze in one. But um, uh, so um, one of the viewers is a, um, involved in a small private online Japanese program and they would like to know um, what are some ways that, you know, AAG, AATJ can help given, you know, it's not like a, a formal school and mm -hmm. like a brick and mortar building type thing. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. that's, a, that's a really, timely question and, and 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 probably the first time we I've gotten a question like that but I think it's something that we need to start considering as more and more online options for Japanese language study you know become available so um, I I think that of course you know some of the regular benefits you know that were on that first slide like you know, court newsletters, access to the newsletter and um, professional development programs. Those are, so for your own pro professional development and, 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 and improving your practice, those are all, all going to be really helpful to you. In terms of growing your program, I, I'm not, um, I think that, or, or, or do you mean like, what can AATJ do for programs like that that are in need of support? Yeah. Um, oh, yes. oh, sorry. That was my yes, question, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, yeah. So I, I run a small online program. And, mm -hmm. you know, one of the challenges, obviously, um, you know, trying to get students uh, yeah. to, you know, sign up. And I was just wondering if there's any grants or any like financial support that um, AATJ can provide to these online programs. So I've been using, you know, basically as a social media like TikTok, um, Instagram. Um, and, you know, I'm, I've been using that as a, um, you know, avenue for marketing. But, you know, I'm just trying to kind of expand my horizon a little bit more and see what other options are available. You know what? Um, that's where that network could really be helpful. Um, the type of program that you're describing could be a really great complement to students who are already enrolled in kind of a traditional type of Japanese language learning, but they want to expand further, or um, the kind of student that we sometimes, you know, will get who uh, they 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 want to do more, you know, during the summer, or you know, the the traditional mm -hmm. classroom just isn't working out for them. Sensei, do you have any suggestions? And so, what one one thing you know, AATJ could do is give you some visibility, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we we have a, a regular email bulletin. We have our AATJ um, Facebook page, mm -hmm. and you know, whenever opportunities pop up you know, that people tell us, hey, there's this opportunity for students or for teachers, um, we publicize that. So I think that's where, I think the networking aspect of it is, is, is the piece that could really be helpful in helping you mm -hmm. get, you know, expand. Mm -hmm. And uh, who could I reach for the, uh, reach out to for that kind of thing? Well, why don't you, you can, you're welcome to start with me. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, just you know, because then I'll that that way it can be uh, I'll know specifically, you know, what sure because I'll I'll have some questions like who who's your target audience and you mm -hmm. know that and and tell me more about the program and then then I yeah so let's, feel free to email me. Okay. And then um, we can I can put you in touch with the right people. Great. Yeah. And I can share actually Anne's um, LinkedIn again here. 
a moment. Um, and um, both Anne and Lena and um, Gabriel, once we get to him, um, are happy to connect with anyone if you have questions and want to follow up. Um, you know, LinkedIn is another great source for networking and everything like that. So um, thank you, Shida Sensei, for your question. Hi, yeah. um, and I think um, we'll probably move on then now. If you have more questions, please save them for the breakout rooms. Um, they'll be a great time to sort of talk one to one with um, Anne and Lena. Thank you again, Anne, for that very informative and thorough presentation. It was fantastic. Um, and now we'd like to move on to um, Gabriel Rebeck and Laurasian Institution. So a brief um, bio about Gabe, and I'll also share his um, LinkedIn contact as well um, for all of you. So let's get the uh, chat here. There we go. All right, so Gabriel Rebeck is the Japan Programs Manager at Laurasian Institution, and he has over 10 years of experience working in Japan and Japan-related education, as well as experienced firsthand the impact that language programs can have on students. Um, he's eager to share some of the ways that Laurasian can help enrich your students' learning in and out of the classroom. So um, thank you so much, Gabe. Thank you very much for the introduction, Sam. Um, yeah, I, uh, I definitely just want to start off by saying that this is a topic that's uh, near and dear to my heart because uh, I was in this amazing Japanese language program in high school. It was the Shawnee Mission School District in Kansas. They had the Center for International Studies where they offered uh, Chinese, but also Japanese, Russian, and Arabic, as well as a geopolitics course along with it. We were bused to another location outside of our high schools for this, for half the day to do this international education. It was so impactful for me. Two years into it, the program's budget got cut. We lost our cool building that we had. We got put into the basement of one of the other district high schools for, for the program. But we still had the language classes, so that was fine. Two years after I graduated, the program was totally cut, just gone, because that kind of thing is not important, I guess. So this kind of program advocacy and uh, and sort of being being the, well, so I was speaking with uh, Ann Sensei about this recently. Sometimes you have to be the Urusai Obasan or Ujisan and get the uh, get the grease that you need um, for for your program. You need to get that attention from your from your districts. And a lot of these programs that we're talking about today are great ways to do that. Um, Sam mentioned some of the things that we at Laurasian do earlier, but I'd like to just speak a little bit more about some of the programs that we have. So I will start by sharing my screen and sharing my sound, as I'm not going to forget to do. Here we are. Um, so yeah, Laurasian Institution, uh, again, as Sam mentioned earlier, we do uh, high quality programs of academic exchange between the US and Japan. Um, we do uh, all sorts of programs uh, together with uh, Japan Foundation, but also we've partnered with the, the U.S. State Department. Uh, we've got a long history of, of doing this kind of thing. Um, we stand pretty close to Japan Foundation. We very much appreciate their support and partnership. We help them spend their money. Uh, they want to spend that money. Sometimes it's a little difficult for them, and that's where we step in. So uh, get in touch with us. We'll help you to uh, get Japan Foundation to uh, give you a little bit of support. Um, so you might know us from some of our other programs, the Japan Outreach Initiative, JOY. Um, if you are with a university or nonprofit group, this is the program for you. This puts a Japanese uh, cultural outreach coordinator into your organization to do uh, Japanese cultural outreach, um, teaching about Japan, that kind of thing. Not language specifically, but Japanese culture. Um, but yeah, we're not going to focus as much on that today because we're talking about K through 12. But that's uh, another really great program that I, I encourage you to go visit our website and look at if you have a chance or have the interest. Um, we've done all sorts of Tomodachi programs, uh, Johnson & Johnson, SoftBank, Honda, those things. We've also done Kakehashi, Kizuna, that kind of thing. That's, that's who we are. That's who Laurasian is. But for today's conversation, what I really want to talk to you about are two particular programs. New Perspectives Japan, which is a two-week summer travel to Japan study abroad program. Uh, and then uh, JLEAP, which is the uh, which is the uh, the Japanese language education assistant program, which I'll get into in just a moment here. Um, so first of all, New Perspectives Japan. Uh, this uh, sends U.S. It's particularly aimed at high school students. We've taken junior high, and we've also taken uh, college students as well. Particularly if they are recent graduates from your high school, say they graduated. Uh, in the fall or graduated in the spring and then you want to take them in the summer that's totally fine we'll take uh, above high school that's okay sends them to japan for two weeks for uh, an educational exchange program as well as home stays uh, this is not just uh this is not just a vacation this is definitely an educational experience that's really impactful i think on the students 
And this is that program advocacy that Anne was talking about. You need to have your students on fire for the program and what better way than two weeks in Japan for getting students excited about Japan. They're gonna come back buzzing, talking about these experiences they had, the relationships they made. Again, I'm speaking from first, firsthand experience here. That's, that's the, we know that Japanese students can be very passionate and this really ignites their passion and puts that passion straight into uh, talking about Japan, which is perfect for your Japanese program. So the program itself, we do two tours, two tours every summer, one in mid-June, one in early July. And the three sort of steps of the program are first uh, teachers and students will choose a study theme. We provide curricula that are uh, about different themes. You choose the theme that you wanna study about and uh, we actually provide, provide that to you uh, well in advance before you've ever been to Japan. Um, so you, you can start learning about what it is that you're going to see once you're there. That helps the students to start conceptualizing so that when they finally do see it, it's much more meaningful. And then of course in the summer they go for two weeks, uh, there's time in Tokyo and then the homestay and then time in Kyoto. That's where they, where they see what they were learning about and what they saw in books becomes reality for them. And finally, and this is perhaps the most important part, um, the follow-on activities. Uh, this is where we challenge the students to think critically about what it is that they saw. Um, this is where it really solidifies in their minds and uh, completes that sort of educational process for them. Again, like I said, it's not just a two-week vacation. We really do everything we can to make this an educational experience. So the cost is $41.75 per student. Um, you, if you can get eight students, then uh, it's free for you. Um, and it's sort of, there's a, there's a rolling rate for, for how that works with, with students and uh, chaperones. You can check the website for the exact numbers. It's $49.95 for an individual unaffiliated student or a Ronin as we call them. I'll talk just a little bit about that in, uh, in a moment. Um, but there are scholarships that we offer as well that can cover up to half of the total price. Uh, students will submit an application demonstrating their financial need and academic merit for that. Uh, applications are typically due at the end of the year. We'll have all the information about deadlines and due dates on the website. Please uh, take a look at that. Um, so the, the support that we provide is, like I said, lots of stuff before you even get to Japan. We give a handbook, uh, pre-departure, all that stuff, detailing all the things that you need to know. Bilingual staff here in the United States and in Japan. Uh, so that if there are any problems, we're there to help. 24-7 emergency line. Laurasian staff stay at the hotel with you. Uh, Laurasian staff can assist with any kind of clinic visits or hospital visits, or say if there's a, a lost passport or something like that, we can step in and, and handle all those problems. And uh, perhaps most important these days, uh, if the program has to be canceled, we deal with all of the contingencies. That's been a big deal these past few years. We're very, very confident that next year is gonna be okay, but uh, we always have to keep these things in mind as COVID will be with us for a while. And uh, we wanna let you know that Rather than you having to deal with the, the headache of all that stuff, we'll take care of it for you. We, we got you covered on that. Um, so the trip itself, like I mentioned earlier, we arrive in Tokyo, do some sightseeing, and that's a, a, a customized uh, tour that you can sort of put together from different options that we make available for you. Then the students go to a homestay and get to experience living in a Japanese house and living with a Japanese family. That's one of the most Im impactful parts of the whole experience is just experiencing that sort of life in Japan kind of uh, kind of time that they get. It's about a week and then everybody moves to Kyoto, does a little bit more sightseeing and then come back to the United States. Um, like I mentioned earlier, if you cannot take a group, if you've got an administration that just doesn't feel comfortable with it or, or can't, uh, or maybe you're just too busy to do a Japan trip that year, have your students contact us directly and uh, we'll take them as a Ronin. We'll take them as an unaffiliated student. Um, that way you get all of the program advocacy with none of the work. Just uh, have them take, do it all through us. We'll take them and they'll still come back on fire for Japan as if you know you had taken the group, but you don't have to deal with it. So um, yeah, just give them our contact information. And we'll, we'll take care of it. Um, how to apply, go to our, our website, laurasian.org. Uh, you'll see programs, click on new perspectives or just laurasian.org slash NPJ. You'll find our, our application portal there. Uh, we, anybody that's uh, applied with us uh, in the past, we've, we've updated the application to this new online portal that works uh, very well, makes it a lot easier for the students to submit all the documentation that they need to do. Um, they can do it right there on their phones, all that stuff. Anybody who's done a Japan trip before, which I imagine is a lot of you, um, we're pretty good at making it easy. It's, it's uh, typically not easy if you're trying to, you know, get all the students and organize all the money and take care of all that kind of stuff. We've, we've been doing this for, for uh, over two decades. And so we know how to do it and we're constantly sort of improving our methods at it too. So trust us, we got it. 
we'll get the students uh, on fire for Japan for you. Uh, okay, and uh, just moving right along really quickly here, because I know we don't have too much time. The other program I wanted to talk about was JLEAP, the Japanese Language Education Assistant Program. So this is the program that puts young Japanese teachers from Japan into your classroom to co-teach with you for two years. Um, these are young Japanese education professionals. They've had 420 hours of uh, language education training, um, but uh, they're, they're a fresh face in the, in the classroom. And again, getting students excited about Japanese, they're a, a cool, interesting addition to your, to your Japanese classroom. If you want to model dialogues, you've already got, or you've suddenly got somebody to do it with. Uh, it's a really, really exciting program that we're happy to, uh, to co-facilitate with Japan Foundation. Um, and yeah, let me just give you a couple of details about this. So having an assistant teacher, an AT, in your classroom will make your Japanese program stronger. Um, you've got this, like I said, fresh-faced young person from Japan ready to share their language and experience with the students. The students love talking to them. Um, whether or not they speak English, we always sort of have them try to communicate with students entirely in Japanese. And so it's a challenge for the students to try to actually utilize the Japanese language that they've been learning. Um, and this program comes at no cost to the school. We pay a salary, we pay a, a housing stipend, we pay a living stipend. We even give a, a material stipend to the ATs and to the host school, the lead teacher as well, to spend on classroom materials. Uh, so this is, it's a thousand dollar grant just wrapped into this program that comes along with it. Uh, you can decide with the AT what you wanna spend that on. A lot of people do textbooks, that kind of thing, if you wanna get some updated textbooks. Um, but we've also had people do rice cookers for like uh, sushi nights and stuff, uh, all sorts of cool things you can do with that. It's real Japanese language, real culture. So I know that probably most of you are native speakers of Japanese um, and you don't need somebody who can tell you what the grammar is, but they've been living in Japan until just recently. And so they can tell you what, uh, I don't know, the students these days have access to a lot of Japanese media and they're hearing the slang in real time now. So you gotta be on top of that when the students are coming to you with questions like, Sensei, what does this mean? And uh, hopefully these, uh, these ATs will be a little bit more up on that lingo. Um, but also it's professional development for you, the lead teacher. Uh, we do, we are actually very, very proud of the training that comes along with the JLEAP program. Um, so we have the illustrious Ann Jordan of AATJ as our lead, lead uh, JLEAP teacher, uh, teacher trainer that is. We also bring in Azuma Sensei, uh, Saito Sensei, Kataoka Sensei, some of the rock stars of the, the Japanese language education field in, in the United States right now to come and teach not just the ATs, but also the LTs, you, the American you know, teachers of Japanese, how to teach Japanese. We give you all the latest techniques. Um, yeah, so they can come and they can teach with you. It's, it's a co-teaching thing. Um, they bring that current knowledge of Japan. They can work on curricula with you. They can work on um, updating your, your Japanese language curriculums, that kind of thing, get the students excited. Um, the responsibilities include uh, a lot of uh, communication with your AT. It's, it's, definitely a, uh, it's definitely a relationship that you need to take care of over the, the two years. You're gonna be working together and seeing a lot of each other. And so you need to sort of uh, have a good relationship and provide them some guidance, help them with like learning how to drive in the US, that kind of thing. Um, we also have an arrival training and then a follow-up training. We ask you to attend those. That's where you get that uh, training that I was mentioning that we're so proud of. Um, and then we also ask for some reporting and some homework to show that you're, uh, that you're putting that training into practice. Uh, I think that's all very important for uh, our teachers and their professional development. Uh, I'd like to share just a brief little video with you of one of our uh, past ATs talking about his experience on the program. あの、日本語を勉強したりとか、あと、コーチングとかに進むかもしれないです。この
だったけどそのハウツーが分からなかったどうやって教えるとかあまりそういう引き出しがなくてでもここに来て花先生に報告だよって教えてもらったりとか亀谷先生にもこういうふうにやると生徒は分かりやすいよとかそういうのでなんかいろいろ勉強して結構変わったと思いますね。ジェリックのトレーニングはただ教えられるんじゃなくて実際その教えられたものをどうやってクラスで使いますかとか教えてもらったことを自分でやるんじゃなくてじゃあ友達同期とじゃあシェアしましょうとかそういう機会があるのであと先輩あの7期の先輩たちと意見を交換したりとかそういうので自分にない意見とかを吸収できてとてもいい経験になりました。Yeah, so I think,、uh, as I was saying, the training is, is a really, really major element of this,、uh, of this program. People apply for it for the help、uh, for the additional pair of hands in the classroom. But really, the, the thing that we're most prou- proud of is that training and the community that you become a part of. You become part of the J Leap family, and you can always sort of rely on that to,、uh, to get opinions and help from, from your colleagues.、Um, we have some other videos.、Uh, I was actually going to show you another one from, a,、uh, from the LT's perspective, but I know I'm blowing right, way past time here. So I encourage you to visit our l a u r a s i a n YouTube page、um, and,、uh, and check out some of these、uh, other J Leap videos. You can get the sort of、uh, LT's perspective. The main thing that,、uh, that some of these LT's talk about is,、uh, is that they were able to do things that they were not able to do by themselves, that they are capable Japanese t- teachers you know, in their own right. But just having another pair of hands, having another native speaker in the classroom makes them able to do so much more. And that's what JLEAP can give you.、Yeah. Um, so to apply for the program,、uh, go to l a u r a s i a n o r g slash JLEAP this time. Again, go to l a u r a s i a n o r g you'll see programs, you can find JLEAP on there. Application part one is due in December,、uh, November. Sorry.、Um, I know that in the past, this application was pretty large. If anybody has、uh, seen that before, we've cut it in half. So now part one is due in November. And、uh, we'll screen those applications at that time and get back in touch with you if you've been selected to move on to the next round. The next part, application part two, is due in January. That's where we ask for some videos of like classroom teaching, that kind of thing.、Um, and then、uh, we do an interview with you in February.、Uh, and that's right before we do our interviews with the ATs in Japan, so that we can sort of、uh, look at both of those interviews and do our matching at that point. We're pretty pow- proud of the, the matching that we do, putting ATs and LTs together. Who will be able to have a, a really powerful relationship.、Uh, and then final decisions are made in March. I want to、uh, sort of stress to everybody if you've applied to J Leap before and you were not accepted, please apply again. The J Leap program is interesting.、Um, sometimes it's you know, based on locations, or sometimes it's based on you o k n we've w only got a limited number of spots available that year, and we have to sort of make our decisions based on、uh, things other than just you know, say the quality of the teacher or something like that. Like I said, we're proud of the matches that we make for the ATs and the LTs together. And if we've got an amazing AT and an amazing LT, and we just can't find a match for the other, you know, on the other side, we're not going to shoehorn them into the program when there's not a good place for them. So, so unfortunately, we can't always take everybody that we'd like to take. Apply again.、Uh, anybody that's, that's tr-、uh, tried before and hasn't made it in, I'd say apply again. We want to hear from you. Um, yeah, l a u r a s i a n o r g slash JLeap. Right now, you'll see that,、uh, that we're on a little pause because、uh, that's, that's what we felt most、uh, comfortable with at the moment.、Um, we didn't want people to think that we were getting ready to dis- dispatch people when, it's, when it wasn't safe, but it's safe now. So,、uh, yeah, we'll have that application up. And、uh, yeah, if you're interested, please、uh, take a look at that or just get in touch with us directly. We'd love to speak with you. And I think at that point, I would like to、uh, open up for any questions, maybe if we've got just a couple here. Yeah, I think we have time maybe just for one question.、Yeah. I see David <laughs> House has raised his hand there. So, David, would you like to,、uh, like to say, ask your question? Yes, the, I'd like to talk to the always dapper and infinitely capable Gabriel.、Uh, Thank you, Mr. House. So, all right. So, as far as J Leap goes, it kind of looked like the way that it was presented that it's primarily targeted for K 12 schools. Would my institution also be eligible for that?、Uh, universities are unfortunately not eligible for J Leap. So, sorry. I'm sorry. The answer to that is no. All right. Okay. <laughs> I, guess, I guess I'll just sleep on that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, so, so this is sort of an answer to, to one of your questions that you'd asked、uh, Lena earlier. So, so, one sort of thought is that、uh, Japan Foundation CGP, the Center for Global Partnerships, which is actually sort of its own separate entity in New York. 
they also have a lot of uh, grants and programs going that uh, that are that are worth looking into. And they they do I think have a lot more relationships with universities around the country. And so I would I would look into them for more university focused programs. They might all right, be able that's to help cool. you out. All right, yeah. There's so many acronyms that always fly around when it has to do with this that it's sometimes hard to put the puzzle together. My my second question is as far as the the new perspectives programs go. Um, so I have pretty good access to our local school system, um, thanks to the Joy program. Uh, so I'm just wondering, like, if I were to pitch new perspectives to the school, would I be eligible to be able to hobble together a group of students to go? Or, or does it need to be a K-12 teacher? That's an interesting question. I just know question. you about it. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of not the target audience for all of this, but it, it does seem like a, a question that would. Sure. Well, so, so my, my short answer to you is, yeah, I'm sure we could make something work. It would probably have to do with, you know, making sure that there was a teacher at the school who was kind of, you know, the, the one that's in charge of, of it, but uh, for you to be sort of a chaperone or or maybe uh, even like the head uh, chaperone, if the teacher yeah, didn't yeah. want to go, like that we wouldn't require yeah. them to go. I'm, I'm sure we could work something out. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. That's great. Thanks, Gabriel. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. Thanks. And um, I know we're, we're a little bit we've run out of time here. So um, if you have other questions for Gabe, please um, save them for the breakout rooms. We'll, um, we're about to get that set up here. Um, and we actually will be pausing the recording. So. Um, before we, before we go ahead and pause the recording and head into the breakout rooms, I want to thank Gabe again for all of this information. I mean, I obviously work also at Laurasian, <laughs> but it's always great to hear um, all of the programs that we have. So thanks so much, Gabe. Um, and let's um, now we'll, hang on one moment here. Um, if you'd like to connect with Gabe, actually, I've got his LinkedIn again here, if you'd like to, if you'd like to connect with him. Um, yeah, we, we do. Let me just say real fast. We do a lot of cool programs at, at Laurasian, but we're always looking for opportunities for other uh, other programming. So anybody who's interested or, or wondering, oh, well, there should be this kind of program or that kind of thing. If, if there's interest out there, we want to do it. So please get in touch if you've got that kind of idea. Yeah, yeah. So um, we're, we'll head into breakout rooms in just a moment. Um, and I'm going to have to like kind of finagle them a little bit to make sure that everyone has some time to speak with our different representatives from um, JFLA, AATJ, and Laurasian. Um, uh, so while I do that, I might um, just give us a quick sign off here, I suppose, since um, we'll be stopping the recording while everyone is in the breakout rooms. Um, please stick around for after the breakout rooms as well, um, not only for the you know one-on-one -on -one time with our presenters, but also um, for a chance to win our door prizes. Um, so I will get this set up. Um, do we want to do like a little, um, do you want to do our outro now, Gabe, or did you want to save that for the very end? Oh, uh, yeah, why don't we do that right now uh, for, for the viewers who are watching sure. this on YouTube, this is where it's going to come to an end. So we can sort of, uh, sure. I don't know if you want me to throw up the, um, the yeah. social media links or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, hang on a moment here. Let me, let me share my screen here. And here we go. Right. So if you'd like to follow us, um, you can check out the chat. We'll have all of the uh, Laurasian um, program and uh, Laurasian institution um, links there. Let me see here, one moment. Juggling many different things on Slack, <laughs> <laughs> or uh, not on Slack, we're on Zoom right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so um, please follow us, connect with us. Like Gabe said, we're open to just discussions about like what is possible, what would help your Japanese programs. Um, like I said, you know, we deal specifically in Japan programs and, you know, a conversation that we have with you could lead to a cool idea or, you know, a new initiative. So um, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, and we will be, oh, well, for some reason I can't switch to the next screen. Um, we will be continuing this um, Larry's Institution Presents series again. Um, so please follow us on social media and um, wait to uh, hear back about our next, uh, our next cool um, Larry's Institution events, uh, Presents event. 
So thank you so much. Um, we're going to end the recording here and then I'll get us into the breakout rooms. So um, thank you to everyone who is watching on YouTube and uh, let's, uh, let's keep the conversation going. So let me see what we're doing here. And then just